Yo, what up? It's your boy Owen JJ Stone, aka Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. We took a couple of weeks off. Shut your mammy Jimmy mouth. It's summer. The weather's been nice. I know you got better things to do than to be here with us. And we had better things to do than to be here with you. But we're happy that you're here now. I appreciate you stopping by. There's already 12 of y'all in here. That's like 12 million to me. You know what I mean? I ain't even got 12 friends. I only got one friend. My one friend. Harry, say what's up to the people, Harry. What's up, everybody? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. You know what I'm saying? So it's nice to be back. I missed y'all, but it was, you know. Summertime, and, like you said. And that's why I kicked Jason off the show. I'm <laughs> tired of being sick and tired. It was Jason's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Jason. You're like nine billion probably. Uh, and uh, one, one of his kids had a birthday today. So, you know, your boy stopping by tomorrow to get his quadrant of cake. I was going to say, I remember that. I remember that. Hey, hey look, that's what, just so y'all know, anybody who know me, you got a birthday, <laughs> you got a cake. You know what I mean, say your boy, BG is slice. Put that thing in the fridge. I'm coming by. You know The cake I mean? tax. The cake tax. Hey. Yep. Birthday cake is my jam. So, yeah, happy birthday to uh, Ferg and to Jace. And I uh, hope they're out there chilling, living the dream, having a good night. Uh, stopping in with Harry just to shoot the breeze and, and, and say hi to the people. Harry, um, you know, I got the website fixed. I got the, the Spotify finally fixed. So now now the, the, the Spotifiers and the iTunes and everybody can get back to the pod. That's another reason I don't bother doing the show because we're here on YouTube and stuff. But most of the people that are listening are on Spotify and iTunes. So we're getting that back together. And then me and Harry got to sit down and, and get the Aristotle ship off and running so we could do that thing there. But uh, the summertime is slow anyway. You know how it is. Like, stuff's yeah. going on. And uh, the weather. We got cricket. Cool. We got cricket. I was going to say there's only so oh! many sports, but <laughs> we taking over new sports now, baby. We're taking over new sports. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is the epitome of literally people don't care. I, thought, <laughs> I was like, yo. I was like, did you hear about cricket? He was like, I don't fuck with cricket. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, we won cricket. He's like, who's we? I was like, America. And I'm like, we always have, I have to check out cricket. So now you got to check out cricket, USA. That's exactly. how we're doing. Um, so we're, we're actually going to talk about some Olympic stuff, obviously, with the Caitlin Clark thing. Mm-hmm. But um, gosh, it's hard being here in Philadelphia. And I envy the lifestyle that you live. You are living a Pure heart, pure mind, can't <laughs> win, can't lose mindset. Well, you're just out there oh my God. watching games, enjoying yourself. I brought up the Jalen Hurst thing to you before we started the show, and you're like, what did he say? It's OTAs. He couldn't have said anything. Like, <laughs> Who cares what's going on at OTAs? And you were just like, didn't even know what's going on. I want to live like that. <laughs> I mean, I have to because it's going to come, right? It's going to come, and we know it's going to come, and it's going to be inevitable. And once the season, once the season even gets close, baby, people. I mean, you know, we're already obviously with this news that you're alluding to, like, you know, looking for stuff to talk about. So it's like clearly, I know that once it gets really ramped up, like it's going to be intense, and I just want to, <laughs> like you said, just just start getting nice and warm, and like let's not do this yet, you know. Oh, thanks for tuning in. First time. Yo. I appreciate you. I, I, I call in the midday show still sometimes, but I had to slow my roll because Spike was getting on my nerves. And he, and he's one of the people that are just harping on Jalen Hurts not saying the right thing in OTAs for the head coach. Like, okay, he didn't really change his role, though. Nick Sirianni wasn't in control of the offense last year. He wasn't in control of the offense since game five of his first year. So when people are trying to like say, we're not giving the cre- credit for everything that he's done. What has he done? The first tenure, five games of his tenure, the offense was pass 62 times, run four. Run 42 times, pass three. And then round game five, he's like, look, I need to focus on the whole team and not play calling. Gave up play calling, and the team took off like a rocket ship. Made it to the playoffs, got yeah. bounced, but then the next year they went to Super Bowl. So I – and then last year, he still didn't have control of the offense. So I don't know what Nick does. So when you ask Jalen Hurts the question, oh, how's Nick's role changed? And he's like, uh, 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 <laughs> it's, it's cool, bro. It's just, yeah. Nick doesn't do the offense. So what was he supposed to say in that moment? It's OTAs. He's like, bro, I'm digesting a whole new menu right now. I got Gordon Ramsay in my face. Oh my God. Kellen Moore is no joke with his yeah. offense. He's got motions and jets and str- he's focused on that. 
So asking him a question about how Nick's coaching style changed, he's like, mm, Nick, Nick, Nick Chiriani is what I like to call him. Pom, pom, <laughs> he's saying, go get it. You know what I mean? Flowers growing. Da, 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 da. Even Nick said last year, he's like, do you talk to Jalen? He said, no. I talk to him sometimes in the hallway because he's not the quarterback coach. He's not the offensive coordinator. So, yeah, he's talking to his team. He's talking to his players, but he's not having the, the one-on-one daily with him because he's not the play caller. So I don't have a problem with Jalen talking like that. You just read the quotes. Does it bother you that he's like, looks like he's looking for an answer? Because what are you supposed to answer with something when it hasn't changed? Right, exactly. And that's what you, what you just said, it, looking for an answer. I mean, he's trying to give an answer. He's not just like being like, that's kind of a weird question. He could, he could easily be dismissive about it, right? We've seen lots of athletes be dismissive about, you know, questions like that are even <laughs> less uh, crazy than that. So, I mean, I think it's just one of those things that he's always trying to be a thoughtful person in his answers. And even if it's thoughtful in a way of trying to, like, not give us <laughs> information, uh, he's always thoughtful in his answers. And I feel like, again, like you said, what's Nick's role changed really? And, and Jalen Hurts, they're asking him to give, like, a nuanced response of, well, get, what are the details, like, of how Nick's role has changed and how it's better in some ways? And it's, it hasn't really changed in any detailed ways, right? It's more general, and he shouldn't be getting involved um, if Nick, if, if he if he had a whole like you know crazy response, long winded response about all the different things Nick's doing differently and all the ways he's getting his involved, or or if, if that's what's really sticking out to him at this stage in the OTAs, like that's not what we want. We don't want Nick to overshadow this crazy new you know offense that Jalen's trying to learn. Ninety five percent different, he said, which is great, but that means a lot of new stuff, like you said, a lot of things he's focused on. I mean, he could probably give way more nuanced answers about that sort of question than about Nick. So again, for me, it's like. Why are we, we, I think it's just one of the, you know what it is? It's really just that thing about how we felt about Nick last year at the end of the year and how it's just like going into the playoffs. We're like, this is a, you know, a, a lame duck coach who's going to be, you know, kicked out if he, if we don't, you know, reach the Super Bowl next year or things like that. I think people are just holding on to that. And again, like we still feel that way. We can talk about Nick in that way, <laughs> you know, anytime and say, will he be the coach next year? Will he not be? But ultimately, like we already, you know, the season just ended. It's a new, it's a new season coming up. It's Let's OTA. just focus on this. Yeah, exactly. Like we're not even. It's we're closer to that feel like the Super Bowl than we are to start of next season. It still feels like so. so um, I, no, I normally yeah. never do this, but I want you to because again, you're you're out of the loop and you got to yeah. free from it. I'm exactly. gonna play a quote because um, somebody just commented. She said, um, "Well, Spike wasn't even here when the coaches changed roles. Exactly. So he doesn't know he was up in New York and he's a New York guy and whatever. I mean." They say he's a Philly guy. I don't hear it. Um, but I'm just going to play what he said today on the radio because I know you don't listen. Through this prism. I've said this. I said this about the Saquon Barkley signing. I've said it about a lot of different things with the Eagles. Imagine it were the Cowboys. You know, imagine that the Cowboys quarterback gave the answer about the Cowboys coach in that way. Everyone would say, all of us would say, oh, my God, that's going to be a disaster down there. Or if they if any any top team about yeah. the head coach, we would say that's going to be a disaster. I am less concerned, I guess, about Jalen's professionalism or or you know leadership or whatever in choosing not to answer it in a way that would have made this go away. I'm more concerned that it's obvious <laughs> there's a problem there. Anyone, yeah. anyone who says that there's not a problem there is crazy. Anyone who, say, who says it doesn't matter because Nick Sirianni isn't running the offense and yada, 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 and we have these great quarters now, uh, coordinators now is crazy. Anyone who says it doesn't matter because they have a ton of talent on offense is crazy. If the, if the quarterback does not like or respect the head coach enough to at least lie for 10 seconds in a press conference, that is a problem. I put a lot of the Eagles things through this prism. So are you wow. crazy? Wow. That was like, <laughs> that was, that was, he was being so absolute when he was saying, I mean, I'm just like, the, it just, <laughs> that was ridiculous. I don't understand. Like, first of all, if the Cowboys did that, like he the, compared it to the Saquon Barkley. Press got a bitch. His cornerback called him a bitch. We <laughs> laughed about it. He called him a bitch to his face. We all laughed about it, and you move on. It didn't melt down the team. It didn't detract uh, uh, Dak from having one of the best seasons he's ever had as a quarterback. Right. And his teammate called him a bitch on hot mic in oh front of the God. world. I mean, so uh, that was Spike asking for anybody who's yeah. listening to audio. And there's 244 comments. And I think I, there might be two comments that were positive. Towards the reference to that, <laughs> you think so absolutely, and it's so cringeworthy 
And yes, he sounds. Crazy. I was gonna say he's calling us crazy for making legitimate points about like <laughs> let's 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 slow our roll here. And also, he's saying like that Jalen didn't like it's a huge red flag essentially that Jalen didn't like lie as as if Jalen said something negative. He didn't even say anything negative, so it's not even like he. I mean, he said something that was honestly. The words for what they are, are are positive to me. I mean, he's being intentional with his messaging. Like, that's what I want Nick to be. I don't want him to be random and like all over the place. I'll like, be intentional. So for me, it's like, what is he talking about? Spike's just, I don't know. He wants to stir the pot or hear his own voice. And, and it's not just him, to be fair. It's a lot yeah. of people on the station on the radio. A lot, a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of fans feel that way, where they're like, Jalen doesn't have a grasp on media. I was like, if you only listen to press conferences, you're going to think, this man is a corporate bank <laughs> businessman. He only gives you direct answers. But if you went and watched his interviews, if you went and watched, uh, looked at his social media, his team that he has around him, he's always smiling, laughing, doing things in the community. He is a positive force. But when you hear him at that podium, this is Philadelphia. We destroy our heroes. Bryce Harper, we weren't on, <laughs> we weren't on air for the show. Yeah. Bryce Harper didn't run out a first base run. You've played sports. Yeah. I've coached sports. When you know you're getting out and anything could happen, somebody could drop a ball or whatever, but 99% of the time, you know when you're going to get out. And for Bryce Harper to not run out every single time when he's got a tweak back, who knows how he was feeling that day yeah. or he was just frustrated, had a bad day. If he would have looked on Twitter, turned on the radio, it's he didn't hustle in game seven of the World Series. I'm like, <laughs> it's the first week in May. Oh, and my God. Aaron, it's like we're the number one team in the league, and this is what you want to be upset about. He's not running. And the narrative across uh, media waves was he's not running because he didn't get a contract extension. Oh my uh, God. Okay. So, but then when he goes and hits a home run in London and does a soccer Knee celebration, slide. that was tight. That was soccer, dope. It was, it was epic. So cool. It was epic. And so smart, was, man. Like, so, no, so smart. I'm, I'm going to get to that. And no one yeah. said, oh, he's doing it now because he's got the contract extension. Well, what, what was the difference in three weeks? Oh, because <laughs> it doesn't fit the narrative yes. that you want to try to push for negativity. Bryce Harper is Bryce Harper, and he he wants greatness. So he gets upset with himself, and Philadelphia is hard on him. If he wasn't as hard on himself as we are, then we'd crush him. Mm -hmm. We the reason we Do you like Nick Sirianni? Is Nick Sirianni your kind of coach? Is he your guy? Do you like him? I mean, like... I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't dislike him, but I don't know that he's the you know the, my my preferred coach. And and I say that to you. Not I. I, I bust your balls about it. and I joke yeah. about it a lot. But like you are more of a positive spin guy. Right. Right. I am more of a realistic spin, easily pushed to negativity. Yeah. But you you try to put your positive foot forward. I mean, my thing about Nick, real quick, just is that like I've had coaches when I've been on great teams, you know, in my athletic career that like when we were knew what we needed to do and we had a team of like guys that knew how to play the the game, knew like what our goal was, knew how to practice, knew how to get better, knew how to get the reps we needed, and the coach was there to help us keep that structure but ultimately like he wasn't teaching us the game right these guys should know the game the coordinators should be teaching the game the specialist coaches should be teaching the game and for me if you have a guy that is at the top and all he's doing is just in your ear constantly telling you that you're a dog that you're that you're that dude you're the man that's going to win you know at all if he can maintain a very positive like kind of overarching thing while everyone else is doing their thing and just be like listen i love you you're the man you got this and he can do it in a real way not just like a oh let me just hold on to my job way then that that could be great, right? So that's why I say I don't dislike it because it's like I do think we're stacked, I do think we're great, but ultimately, like if you don't reach the pinnacle, that's when a coach like that you look like you know you're falling short, obviously. So, but for me, it's just like if he can be that positive guy, that's why I don't hate him as a coach in general. Obviously, we have the you know evidence <laughs> of things to like help us you know push for a new coach, but you know, that's why I said I don't I don't dislike him, but you know whatever. I dislike him, right? And I I haven't liked him since the year one with the Frank Reich thing in Indianapolis and he's yelling at fans and he's pumping his chest out. I don't like when you're in a tunnel against the chiefs and you lost them in the Super Bowl and you're excited about beating them in the regular season. I don't like that. You are, are screaming in the middle of a Super Bowl and the quarterback has to tell you to put your hand down and step back from the sideline and corral you emotionally because those kind of things charge up the other team. Also, it doesn't show you have self-control or self-awareness. And I know they hired him because of emotional intelligence. And, right, and he's right. a person. That, I have no doubt in my mind that he cares about every single player. Yes. I have no doubt in my mind that if there was a puppy bleeding in the street, he would run into traffic to get it. 
But I also think that you shouldn't be arguing with Giants fans in your neighborhood and then coming and talking about it in press conferences when you could barely stitch together sentences. Yeah. I don't think that it's good for you in an exit interview for the year when they took two weeks to possibly fire you but retained you. And the third question you were asked is, what do you do here? And you don't have an answer. You don't know what you do here? Okay, then why are you still here at this job? You didn't talk to media and understand how to answer these questions. So when somebody wants to come and attack Jalen Hurts, who's been nothing but a media darling and answering questions, I, I'm tired of rent being due. I get it. I know rent's due, bro. You, 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 you backed up, bro. You about to get evicted. I heard rent's due. Y'all ain't pre- performing. I know that's annoying, but in Philadelphia, where if you misstep by not saying anything, you get ripped in local media, and then that local media wants to act like they didn't do anything wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's now, now they they love to use the word now. They're they're speculating, <laughs> speculating. because they know. <laughs> they think oh god! Got yeah. people calling in and said Jalen Hurts never smiles. Jalen Hurts isn't happy. Jalen Hurts doesn't enjoy anything. Oh my god. And I'm oh like, my god. who he enjoys? It? He enjoys everything. Jalen Hurts enjoys life, man. Come on. Before the games, when you see him out there, rah rah, and when you watch the 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 Instagram feeds afterwards, when he's giving speeches to the team. Leadership comes in so many different ways. Leadership is when you get benched at halftime of a national championship game and you get there on the sideline and you're coaching up the guy Tung Tuvaloa mm-hmm. to help him win. And when you win, you're the first person to run over to the guy that took your spot to hug him. That's Absolutely. leadership. That's leadership. And he's always had leadership. So to say now that he doesn't sit down and say, I don't want to get going, guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I mean, Tom Brady used to cuss people out on the sidelines. You think everybody wanted to sit there and get cussed out by Tom Brady? No. And he didn't do it the first five years he was in uh, uh, the Patriots. First five years, he wasn't doing none of that. He wasn't yeah, doing I mean, none of that. Exactly. I mean, I, and I see Thunderclap throwing here if you speak up more at the press conference. I get, like, I, I understand why people have that take. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely understand, like, people getting tired of Jalen's. Uh, just like you know, I guess uh, haikus or whatever stuff he'd be saying, but ultimately, like I said, it's it's. I don't think that it really is a sign of a larger problem. Like ultimately, you can think that. I wish he could say more. I wish he'd give us a little bit of more peace of mind if we're anxious about the season or anxious about issues. But honestly, like he's one of those guys that I think it'd be more it'd be more obvious if there was a real problem. It'd be much more obvious on his answer. When did Bill Belichick ever install confidence? <laughs> he lose me. He's just on like, a, shut up, I got it. Stop, to, stop on, talking on to Cincinnati. me. Cincinnati. Yeah. And then if you watch, go look at Mac Jones's first two interviews after a game. He was happy. Yeah. And they won two games. He was happy. Someone got a hold of him and said, don't be happy. Mm-hmm. And he went into Patriot mode. And then his career tanked. Out. It's night and day from a kid who was out there dancing and doing all this stuff in college till he gets to the Patriot way and he can't talk. Yeah. Tom Brady never said anything great or fun. On a golf course, he's a comedic genius. Mm-hmm. You watch him on Instagram, he's hilarious. But when you watch him in press conferences or you listen to him, when did he ever say anything of value? He just gave you the straight company line. Peyton Manning never gave you anything but the company line. He put everything on himself, and he gave you company line. I'm not saying that Jalen Hurts is great like like they are. Yeah, right. I'm just saying he aspires to be, and he holds himself yes. to that caliber. And better for him to be short and sweet mm-hmm. than get picked apart for misspeaking. He's a communication Absolutely. major, graduated, went back and finished college. I mean. And we're just used to it in this era too. Like people, it's like, oh, you pause to think about what you had to say. Oh, oh, wow. What does that mean? Like that must be some issue. It's like, oh my god, people need to do that more often. <laughs> and, and he's doing his job, so it is what it is. Especially when you have a coach like Nick Sirianni who doesn't speak very well. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I he fumbles over his stuff. He needs to pause way more often than you yeah. know what I mean. So, so it, it's. I'm gonna. We're just gonna again, just for people who are watching this who haven't seen uh Jalen be happy we're just gonna watch this together real quick and uh so other people can just see the joy in Jalen's face yo Steve what's up Steve all right hold on 
to get to run this back. Steve, you got me distracted, Steve. Uh, <laughs> I had to, I had to throw it in before you we late. got going. You late. <laughs> you know um, I mean? you're, you're supposed to be here on time. My bad, Steve. We, we missed you the last couple of weeks, bro. I'm not, I'm, I don't know. Oh, shoot, I can't dock his pink. I was going to say, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Your face, What's going on, guys? It's Jalen Hurst, and I'm going to be answering a couple questions from you, the fans. From Twitter, who's winning the squad competition between you and Saquon Barkley? Once I get past like 500 pounds, it all feels the same. So I build it myself. Yo. Saquon wins because nothing cool about a quarterback being stronger than you. <laughs> Instagram, what's it like being in the middle of the brotherly show? It gets uh, it get chaotic. Yeah. But just run my feet. <laughs> <laughs> you got not know what's coming? From Twitter, King Kincaid. What pair of joy and cleats are your favorite to play in? Typically, special things happen when the 11s come on. I have a different pair, a couple of different pairs this year, so that'll be something to look forward to. Some special. Worst thing about Jalen Hurts. I was going to say, he knows that's the right answer. The 11, Ooh. the Concords. Ooh. Ooh. Shut up, Harry. Too I nice. Like <laughs> Jalen knows. That's going to be fun. From Twitter X underscore sports tape. Which teammate gets your stamp of approval on the Ox? Uh, BG likes good music. AJ likes good music. Nicole Dean likes good music. Lane likes good music. Is there a reason why? Uh, it just got good, got good flavor. Nicole kind of has a, a balance of new and old. Lane's a Texas guy, so he knows Houston like myself. And then the other two guys, they, they're not into the fast and bang, bang, bang and all that. If That's the other thing. He's an old soul. Like, he's listening to Anita Baker and Bell Bib DeVoe. And, yep. like, he's like an old school jammy jam kind of guy. He, I mean, he ain't. And I, I've heard other people say Lane's music is good. And he was the last person he said. And I'm like, how long was that pause in between the people he said and thinking about Lane? He's just trying to give the answer that he want that is the right answer to him. Like, that's it. And he and again he's he gives the the rent is due cookie cutter yeah. don't take the rat poison answers because he was coached by Saban who's the king of that and he instills that in people. So um, if you were to play another sport professionally, what would it be and why? I say I'd probably play baseball. I feel like I'd have been really special at it if I'd have continued to play, but I just let it go. High school it was my sophomore year. I played my freshman year. I played baseball and I played basketball. I love baseball. It was my first love, but I let it go. I think I made the right decision. You did make the right decision. You'd have four hundred million dollars. I was gonna baby. say. <laughs> <laughs> oh baby. But Greg Carroll on Instagram. What's your favorite college football memory? My favorite college football memory was the beginning of it all when I early enrolled. Immediately, I was thrusted into being uh, the scout team quarterback. It's like a senior high school. Essentially, I was the scout team quarterback. I was playing Deshaun Watson on the scout team. And I learned a lot quick. I earned my respect that quick, but it was very challenging. But it was fun. I think that was probably the, the best part for me, uh, my favorite memory, because I uh, made a lot of good friends. I just earned their respect as a youngin. Instagram, Tevin. Your favorite thing in college, and all the things he's done in college, he gives you the scout team. Earning your way onto the field, yeah, you know, pretending to be another quarterback, get, getting rolled up on by the defense, and that's the answer he gives. Like this dude, man, he's a different kind of cat. Yeah, like, he's a different kind of cat. Lh, what teammate would be the best neighbor and why? Um, I don't know. Depends on what you want in a neighbor. Some people want pies and cakes and wine. And <laughs> some people don't want anything. Yeah, he's not messing with me, though. Oh, look at how happy he is cooking Chef it up. Oh, he's a gr McGrudgeon. <laughs> what would constitute a perfect day for you? A perfect day is coming in, going to work, making the home safe. Every look at the smile on his face. Day. Exactly. Perfect day. Coming into work, making the home safe. Ain't nothing better than that. Like, I mean, but people say, oh, he don't have fun. You don't, I don't ever see him smile. Go look for content so you can understand who the dude is and what he's about before you just listen to clips or, or on the radio or excerpts on. Where, where did you read the article at? Where was that? Where did you read from? The Sports Illustrated. <laughs> Sports Illustrated trying to paint it like this dude's out here a begrudging against the team. Like, come on, bro. Like, sometimes. Is coming in, going to work, making home safe. Every day is a perfect day.
happy, smiling. Given the choice of anyone in the world, who would you want as a dinner guest? I actually answered this question uh, before, and it was, uh, I had like Barack Obama, Denzel, and uh, Frankie Beverly, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant. I feel like I had another one, but those are the ones that come to my mind. But I feel like that would have been a good dinner. You get to learn from them, ask them questions, a perfect world, and great energy, great experience, and a lot I can learn in that room. So I ask a lot of those questions, and we'll just have a good time. What's your I ain't hear no Go James in there. <laughs> Because go busy, he's still working. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else he's listening is unemployed. They're not alive. Yeah, no question. Like, off the wall stuff. Probably had your time. I told you. Prime time play, man. Prime time play is a big time game. If you uh, want to hear the laugh, you ask PG. Blue, 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 blue. <laughs> <laughs> crazy out of Dallas, too. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you for sending questions. Let us know who you want to see next. So again, I, I'm just saying, I know nobody's perfect. I know that nobody, no, nothing's perfect, but he's my guy, bro. Like, I just like the way he carries himself. Yeah. I like his demeanor. And that's just I, how he is, man. Like, yeah. the, like he's in his mind when Dallas is acting crazy and, and BG's acting crazy. Like, he's enjoying it, but he's enjoying it with that personality. He's enjoying everything yeah. with that personality. Yeah. He, he literally, pregame, postgame with his teammates, he's out there having fun and enjoying and rah-rah. Game time, focused. Like, I, I remember the thing I hated about Carson Wentz the most was even when he was winning, Carson Wentz never sat down and talked to the quarterback coach or looked at a tablet. If you go back and look at any, I got all the games take. Go back and look yeah, at any right. game of Carson Wentz. He never picked up a tablet. I'm sitting there again. Peyton Manning went and looked at his mistakes. Peyton Manning went and looked at his touchdowns. Carson Wentz just was like, I, I'm – perfect it's fine it is what it is i made a mistake i'll get over it he doesn't look at plays he doesn't look at formations he never picked up a tablet somebody handed him one one time he threw it that's the only time i remember him touching a tablet and i'm like how do you allow this from your quarterback so having somebody like jalen who is a stand-up guy gives me a good answer i i'd rather have the rat poison answer than him to just sound stupid and lost yeah, and, that, and that's kind of Jake putting in here in the comments, you know, like that Jalen was MVP candidate until everything fell apart. It wasn't just his candidacy. Everything obviously fell apart for us. And again, like this new offense, I think, aren't we all excited to see Jalen in it? I mean, I feel like we're, people might be scared still because Jalen's the type of quarterback that he is. But ultimately, he's improving and working hard every single year. And this new offense is going to be, I think it's going to be great, man. Like we have, we have Saquon Barkley. I mean, we re-signed everybody or we extended everybody. It's going to be awesome. And uh, people need to chill out. I don't care about what Jay looks like in the office. I'm waiting to see Schmitty. I want yeah, to see yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for my guy to stop having to do circus catches on the sideline. I'm waiting for him to, like, shoot up the middle on a jet sweep and come out in the open field. Like, oh, oh, man. I'm trying to scheme some people wide open for Jalen. That's what I want to see. Exactly. So, you know, there exactly. You go. I'm trying some to wheel see. routes with Saquon. That's what I really want to see. <laughs> Get this uh, man and, out in space. And I want to see Jalen under center more now that um, yeah. Kelsey's not there, not taking showers, and, it, and without the rocket. <laughs> Exactly. So Kelsey, apparently, you know, I, I don't know if you read this or heard when he yeah. talked about it. Jason Kelsey's snap has so much force yeah. on it. That's why he was always in shotgun. Yeah, it's even in shotgun, like you, it's like a, taking a bullet. That's crazy. Like, Michael Vick, every time somebody asked him about that, Michael Vick was like, he had, I've never got, got a ball from anybody as fast and strong as he does. Like, he's like, if you're under center, I almost feel like your hands are going to break because he just puts it so hard in your hands. So, I mean, it, it's going to be a difference with that. Yeah. You're going to, we're going to see how the offensive line holds up with all the movement around mm -hmm. without Kelsey. But I, I'm just excited in general. And everybody's like, oh, they might go up, start off to a slow start. They're going to have a slow start because they're going to be in Brazil, first of all. <laughs> it, it's just like, I mean, come on. It, it's, it's so different when you have to travel out of the country, out of your zone, and it's going to be game one. So. I saw somebody get interviewed talking about how like they're going to be in some sort of like bubble sort of environment. Maybe not like actual bubble, but they're going to try to keep them kind of like contained wherever yeah. they're at. It's not yeah, a good they're place. Yeah, they're not allowed to leave the hotels. They, they got little armored vehicles taking around. I don't even yeah. know why they're in Brazil. Like, I don't know either. But, you know, expand the team as long as everybody gets back safe. I mean, maybe we just got birds fans in Brazil like that, man. I don't know. Oh. We, got, we got Phillies fans in England. We got a crazy, you know, we're taking over as usual. So We do, we do. Um, So, dang it. What was I going to say about it? No, no, you're good. You're good. So last thing about Nick and the coaching. So here's the thing. The offense goes well. The team plays well. 
let's say they make it to the NFC championship game and they lose on something. Who gets the credit? Nick Sirianni, Jalen, Kellen Moore, Fangio. Like if they have a Man, good season, that's a, that's a good how question. does Nick get any of the credit? Yeah. And then on top of that, I'm, I'm going to ask you this other question. What do you do? Let's say they have a phenomenal offensive year. They're top five in the offense. They make it to the conference championship game. Win or lose, but they make it to the conference championship game. And then Kellen Moore gets offered a head coaching job. <laughs> and you've got Nick Sirianni sitting here. Uh, you God. just let you let Kellen Moore go and then start a whole new offense over again? This is why they shouldn't have kept Nick Sirianni. Yeah, because that's the thing, man. Well, what do you what do? You, what do you do? Goes, <laughs> if it goes poorly, you fire Nick Sirianni and Kellen Moore, and you just start all over again. Yeah, I mean, you know, thunderclap throwing Nick probably out again. Like that's like you you want that the way you're painting it, right? You that's what you want. You want yep. Kellen Moore to become the coach if that's what's happening. But it's like imagining that actually happening is hard. It's hard to see. I mean, it just that doesn't happen. Like head coaches, but this but at the end of the day, maybe someone's gonna have the balls and just do it and then just fire him and just make the change. So I don't know, but. Because I tell you what, they're going to have a successful season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the schedule is favorable. They have too many weapons. And the the new offensive scheme is going to allow them to utilize those weapons. And the defense, I mean, I don't know if they're going a 2-7 back because they got all defensive backs. They got 30 defensive backs. I don't know. They're just going to have a a, a Carter and um, what's-his-face on the (laughs) D-line. Everybody else just D-back. So. (laughs) It it's a it's going to be a weird situation. I expect them to win eleven to twelve games, which is a positive and a good season. And so people are going to come out. I don't know what's wrong with Kellen Moore. He interviews poorly or something because he should have got an opportunity to head coach right. but he hasn't. Right. But here in Philadelphia, you know how that goes. This is going to be showcase with this offense. It's going to be showcase for Kellen Moore. Everybody's going to want. They, they always want our coordinators. Yeah, we have one in season. So this is going to be the year that he gets the opportunity to head coach. Definitely. So. If we do well, do you just let him walk in and keep Nick Sirianni? No, I mean, I'm, <laughs> the way bro, you keep the, <laughs> that's, like that's the question. Like, yeah, I said, I'm all this stuff. Jalen didn't support Nick. Who's supporting Nick? Lori went out on a boat for two weeks. Yeah, and didn't. Oh, it don't take that it's, long. It's a mind. business, man. Like we always say, people talk about coaches and, and players and this, that, and the third. It's like I guess you see it less maybe with coaches because they have such personal relationships with the owners, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why coaches, lame duck coaches don't get, I mean, yeah, Jason Garrett, I mean, he just came to mind. So definitely has to do with some of that, you know? So, I mean, at the end of the day, I think people are always going to like Nick, like we've talked about, he's, he cares and that's what matters. When you know somebody cares, you're going to, you're going to always kind of respect them a little bit at least. So, but like Jake's saying in the, uh, in the comment here, yeah, I think it's, it's a tough look, but got to keep Kellen Moore if we really do succeed the way we might. We really Jake, do. what you going to pay him, Jake? You gonna pay him head coach money? Because that's what it would take to keep him here. Yeah, he, he's got options. Because Hopefully, Vrabel and Belichick just poached some of that stuff from him too. Honestly, because they're gonna, they're gonna be coming back next year. So Belichick might take next job. I mean, I'll take <laughs> I'll take I'll take Vrabel, Belichick. If we get those three potentially, either any one of those three would be nice. But if Kellen does well, I want to keep him though. I I, I wanted um, Vrabel. Yeah. Uh, before and I, it, again, my my general point is that. Jalen Hurts didn't have to stick up for Nick Sirianni because Nick Sirianni makes it very hard for anyone to stick up for Nick yeah. Sirianni. And any kind of the credit that he's earned and he deserves, I'll say that Jalen Hurts has always been a winner in college. And then he came here and he won. So, yep. I mean, uh, Nick didn't start really winning until he gave up play calling. So at what point, besides watering these flowers, does he do? He's not putting <laughs> the soil in. He's not yep. planting the seeds. He's just watering them. And, and we loved him. We loved him. <laughs> the first time you get play calling and we were doing well, we loved Nick. Like, didn't everyone love Nick? So, I mean, at People, least just chill out I, for now. I'm I'm horrible. I didn't like – I. I'm very, okay. I'm very people centric. <laughs> I didn't like Nick Sirianni at the first press conference. And I never got over it. Ah, uh, I feel you. I, I mean, that was I, rough. It I, was rough. I never. That was the worst press conference I've ever yeah. heard in my entire life. I was like, this guy's a buffoon. How did he sit in a room and convince you to become the head coach? I just haven't liked him since day one. So everything he's done subsequently after that, the whole rah, and the crowd and all that stuff, and on the sideline, the antics and the and everything that people whoop de whoop about. There's been like two times where he's done I'm like, yeah, get him. Like the, the fan of me is like, ah, ah, but then I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like we're going to start really becoming the villain to people and I don't like it. So, I mean, 
Yeah, Stalin, Stalin ain't going nowhere. He he had success in Indy. What was his job in Indy? Was he a quarterback's co- wide receiver coach? Yeah, something what, like that. You have an Indy. When you got Andrew Luck. <laughs> so, I mean, like after that, what success did they have? I, I'm just trying to figure out where the success is coming from. He did he did create the tush push. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I just, I just want to put that out there. Yeah, I was gonna say we're not trying. We're not trying to like overly defend Nick or anything like that, or overly crush but, him. But that's the point. Hard, that's the point. It's a hard question. If we do yeah. well, what do we do? No, I mean with more. I think just, Fangio's not going yeah, anywhere. Fangio no. might end up being Jim Johnson here. They they've always liked his style of defense. As long as he can maintain, hold, and grow the defense, they've they've modeled the defense in the last five years after his style of play. He's the godfather of that soft yeah. own crap that they like to do. So he, he could age very well into that yeah. role. He's probably not going to go anywhere. I mean, in He's my mind, it, last year. Right. And if, but if it's like at the end of the day, if, I don't, I mean, I, this might be like ignorant to say, but it's like, for me, it's like, if a guy is going to be with a, with a whole organization for a whole year, Kellen Moore, implement the offense, this, that, and the third. And we have guys in house that are, you know, hopefully we have some assistants that are, you know, at least like maybe not geniuses, but our offensive intelligent, you know, sort of potential coaches. It's like, can we not just like maintain that with somebody else potentially a little bit if it's going well and Fangio ends up being the guy? My thing is like, we might have a couple good options with those, two, you know, potential coaches, not named Nick Sirianni, but Fangio and Hell Moore, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I think if like you said, if it ends up being that case, that case where it's like, it looks like we do need to keep Fangio and elevate him, I, I would, I would be cool with that, I think, in that scenario. Um, but, you know, because again, I don't know Kellen Moore. I don't know too much about Kellen Moore besides the, you know, he's right. He's drawing up the plays that it looks good. But like you said, the interviews, I'm not sure what his head coaching uh, ability would be. Yeah. Thundercock, the only way he keeps the jobs is that they win the Super Bowl. You're right about that. Uh, so the Phillies game is over. Schwarbaum just uh, concluded and, you know, he realized that it is um, Schwarber, Schwarber month now. Hold on, wait. It's June, baby. He's doing his interview. Let's listen to his interview. What a way to start this ball game. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously good when you can uh, put a run right on the board, especially when you got our guy going out there and, uh, you know, give him a one-run lead. So uh, felt good, and uh, obviously we were able to, uh, to tack on some more. And, uh, you know, great game all around. Yeah, the, the base running was great. Stop scoring from second on the air by Dominic Smith was, you know, the, was unbelievable. And he's iced him down. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> he raked his own. <laughs> you know, you mentioned Zach. I, it just you get to watch him from the dugout this year when he pitches. It, it nothing ceases to amaze you what this man does, does it? Yeah, I mean, every time that guy toasts the mound, it's it's been special. Um, you know, I, I feel like just the command aspect of it is is so good right now. And uh, you know, when he has command of all of his pitches and he keeps adding pitches to his arsenal. Um, you know, I mean, he's he was already hard to hit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when he keeps adding, adding, adding and being able to put it where he wants, I mean, it's it, it's just not fun. Well, you've been around a long time in this game. Have you ever seen a power pitcher with his command? Um, I mean, it's it, it's tough. I mean, you know, you, you rarely see some of these guys who have that kind of stuff and, you know, high, you know, High seven, six, seven. You know, he can sit at four, put it where he wants, and then he can go get one when he needs it. And um, you know, when he has that sweeper and that splitter going too, I mean, it's it, it's. I'm happy I don't have to face it. <laughs> yeah. You know, sit. You know uh, Kyle, getting a, a win back in the states. I mean, I, I know it sounds crazy, but with the, we swept the Cubs last year after they got back from England. Is is, is there something to that? Just getting a win to make yourself feel like, all right, we're okay. Yeah. You know, I feel like you know, obviously it's it's a long trip and. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but still a long trip, and um, you know, trying to get readjusted uh, yesterday and coming into the day to feel like you know what we we can go out there, get a win, feel good about it, and um, you know, go from there. Especially you know, losing a guy and uh, who's really important to the team, and you know, it, it was a it was all around good win. Well, go enjoy it. We appreciate it. I know you got a couple other things to do, but we uh, appreciate you joining us tonight. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Kyle. See you later, Kyle Schwarber, Thanks, our guest. Schwarby. Shorby, so yeah, I saw I saw the comments there. Feels like are you let me let me so before we get to talking about it, let me just tell you guys the one I'm from the future, it says it in my bio, and I'm always right. And I'm always right because I'm from the future. It's not like I'm some kind of super genius or anything. It says that I'm a time traveler. And last year at the beginning of the year, I said to anyone who listened, I got it on recordings, I got it in the pod, I got it on internet, I got it on radio. <laughs> we are not going to win a World Series last year. I said we're gonna we're gonna make the playoffs, we're gonna make a run. 
but we're not going to win the World Series. Next year, 2025, we're going to win the World Series. And everybody's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I mean, 2025, we're going to win the World Series. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I was basing that on Bryce Harper being out. He came back like a superhuman sooner yeah, than we all expected. But I still said, we're not winning it this year. There's too much ground to game. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't know how he was going to hold up after that injury. And he didn't. And now this year, as um, Jake tweeted, I mean, commented, the team is special. Yes, they're special. This is the year I predicted us to get to win the World Series. So I'm just saying, I also put down my bet. Uh, I had 98 wins. And yeah. we look, we're going to get them 98 wins. Looking so very good. Uh, we are, and uh, and knock on wood, they're surviving all of the injuries. Yes. And um, we haven't had that many injuries pitching-wise. But the fact that everybody next man up and the way the team loves each other, the daycare, the the June Schwarber, I mean, I felt bad for him. Schwarber's been down a little bit. He's been in a lot of walks. People aren't pitching to him. He hasn't been in his bombs. Everybody's like, oh, June's right. And now, now it's June. He's hit a couple. He hit two tonight. So the team in general, when one person's down, another person steps up. And um, Stubbs got to come in here and earn that little backup check. You know, I mean, he can't just be the the, the clubhouse yeah. DJ right now. got to come in and put that work in because JT's been getting beat up. He's been getting yeah. all kinds of odd balls to the knees and chest and neck and back paws. <laughs> but, I mean, hit up. So, um, you know, he's going to get his knee scoped or whatever. So they said he'll be out, you know, 10 to whatever days, probably maybe hopefully no more than a month. And um, we can just survive and keep going. We got a lead. And it's just fun to watch the Phillies right now, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, it's exciting. Short bomb, yeah, I saw someone, the, the, the caption or whatever the commentator said when he hit the second bomb was like, that's almost 900 feet of uh, homers tonight. You know what I'm saying? That's exciting. Like, let's enjoy it. You know what I mean? Especially like, baseball is the longest season of them all. Like, let's enjoy it. But also, like you said, I'm feeling great. The way that we're responding to injuries, the way we're responding to, you know, Sir Anthony's one bad outing, I feel like even the media, everyone's kind of response to that was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, he's been great for us all year. Let's relax. I feel like there's everyone is is buying in in a way that's like no matter what little little bump in the road here and there like we're gonna figure it out right the ship um, and again everyone has their each other's back that's why you know I know you're not the biggest you know uh, topper guy but it's like that's probably what his best quality is right like he's just managing everyone as a team and a holistic kind of like a better Nick Sirianni probably <laughs> in many ways um, but yeah topper it's done regular season I love topper it's postseason yeah. his moves that he makes it, it kills me a little bit. But I, you know, it's what we got. He's not going anywhere. So I just gotta hope that he's learned from yeah. his mistakes. I got I gotta hope that he learns to have some kind of strategy in the postseason because he's just not a strategy guy. And no. that's what hurts me the most. And he didn't learn from his mistake in the World Series. He made the same mistake. And I am not the biggest baseball savant, and I'm not a genius, but I mean, my God, when you watch other teams, so a guy's hit nine straight times. Yeah, they walk us. To get around him, <clears throat> us, you just line up there and pitch it to him. Yeah, yeah, the guy's yeah. Guys, hot. Pitch to him. Like you can't, you can't just walk this guy one time and maybe get in his head, get him out of rhythm, make him yeah. think next time he's up at the plate, hey, we, we might walk you. Like little things like that. I'm like, Topper, can we please just do something? Nope, yeah. we're just gonna line, we're going out there and it's, it's, it's who's next up in the bullpen, and that's so. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's almost like the thing where it's like he trusts the players so much that they they play well for him, but then he trusts them so much that he just is like, I'll just throw you back out there no matter what. When it's like, you know what, Chopper, like have some confidence in that they trust you trust them so much and they that they trust you a little bit to like say, you know what, let me make this move. I don't even think, you know, hopefully he even knows to make the you know that move yeah. uh, in the situation, but. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like I said, <laughs> I don't want to get us going in that in that vibe though, because yeah, like, again, it's too good right now. It's too good. Well, uh, Jake, you know, we definitely need a new postseason song. Yes, I don't know what it'll stubborn. be, but like, and uh, it, it's it's funny because people were like so mad when they lost to the Mets, they're so mad when they lose a game. Oh my god, so mad when somebody doesn't get hit. Like, Soto, and, 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 wah, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> like uh, Rojas. I'm like, if you're crying about your ninth hitter and your fifth starter. Shut up. Like, it's your fifth starter. Like, right. and, and, and that's what he went out to London and balled. It wasn't his yes. fault that we lost that game. But you know, almost he, came back. It was a great play to end the game. A great he, play. So. He's been kicking this guy in the back all year so far. Yeah. But it's crazy to me. Like, we're up big uh, in the sense that some people are, like, living and dying. I'm like, bro, it's not football. It's not 17 weeks. you got 162 games. Like, we're going to be okay. But it's it's also 
nice to see people that care and and put that much effort into being angry. I'm like, I can't be mad yeah. at my team right now. You know, like you never had a bad day at work, bro. Like, come on, dude. you're not losing series. You're not getting swept in series. They get they get swept in the series. Oh, I'm gonna be hot. Yeah. I, I will. My Twitter fingers will be tweeting. My voice will be thunderous. But right now, splitting a series, winning series, sweeping yeah. other people, and having bad moments, I'm not gonna get angry at this team. It's just no. not. In my blood, uh, there's, there's a there's a tinge of me as a Yankee hater beyond all. Probably maybe you know, again, other than the Cowboys, I don't know if I hate another team or the Yankees. So it's like one of those things that they either they're tied with us or that. I guess after tonight, I don't know if they play it. I guess we might be a half game ahead, but I do. I do. Part of me is like, oh man, I'm anticipating that Yankees match in the World Series, and I hate them so much that I'm like, I, I do want to smoke them in the regular season too. But <laughs> again, I won't be. I'm not trying to like bring any sort of unnecessary negativity into this team right now. Well, we'll we'll see how. Um... The Yankees hold up. We'll yeah, the Yankees hold up. Um, do do you want anything right now, or are you just gonna chill until the deadline? Are you? Are you I mean, I was looking at some stuff and I, looking for. Yeah, you know, it's, what are we gonna do? I mean, there's like there's I forget what his name is on the White, White Sox. Sox. Yeah, yeah, but it, up and arms about that. But I'm like, I'm not giving up three prospects. No, right now. no. He had one good year. He is 26. He is super cheap, uh, but. He's only had one good year, and he's injury prone. Yeah. So I'm not giving up all that for him. He's not worth it. He's not Soto. They want a Soto back. Yes, right. That's not Soto. And that didn't work out for the Padres either. So no. like, it's not the right yeah. thing to do. Our team is exactly. our team is stacked. We're we're winning game again. Like pitching is so good that our offense is not even been close to what the peak offense could really be because of the injuries, ups and downs. T- Turner been out. Marsh hurt. JT. I mean, it's like let's just get everyone healthy. It's a long season. Get everyone healthy for the playoffs. Keep the pitching rotation going, and we'll be fine. I don't need to do anything like that. I mean, come on. My my favorite thing about it is, again, how there's no nuance. Um, somebody can have a show every day, four hours a day, and they can't bring the fact of nuance to yeah. the game. Like, okay, you want a – all I would want is a closer, right? Give me a good closer. Um, but at the same time, when you start naming the guys off, the guys you're going to get are from low-budget, non-winning teams. And, yeah, they're closing out spectacularly for a 20-win team, for a 40-win team that doesn't make the postseason. How are they going to be in Citizens Bank Park with 40,000 people chanting, crying, the bell ringing, the field is shaking? <laughs> And it's game six in the World Series, and the ground is shaking. Yeah. How is that guy going to hold up as my closer? I don't know. I don't know. And, and all we wanted was we needed this guy and that guy. I, is he proven? Can he handle it? He And he might rise to the occasion. You know, uh, Kirk Ring for us. You know, it was great last year getting him out there for the, that those one innings every now and then. Did that, it was like, oh, you should have kept him out there. Nah, he's young. You keep him out there one time, get him going. And hopefully he grows and he builds. And he seems way more confident this year. Yeah. Because, again, playing in those high leverage moments makes the regular season like, eh, it's okay. But if you bring a guy who's never even been in the postseason to come in here, yeah, he looks good on paper, but pressure bust pipes. So I don't even know if you mess the camaraderie of this team right now and who you do it yeah. for. And that's what Don Brasky gets paid the big bucks for. He's excellent at his job. Yes, yes. And so, you know, I have faith in him. I have faith in the team. And that's a great place to be in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. You need to have faith in the team. And the um, franchise organization. That might be the biggest part. Organization is the issue, is the issue usually in the city, honestly. So it's like that's what's what's exciting. Is like I trust him to make a move or not make a move if he knows it's not necessary. I trust that as much as I trust him making a good move. And Luis Roberts, the clap through in there. That's the uh, White Sox guy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I get mad at something else. Phil's, Phil's got it. I'm excited. We, we – uh, World what's Series, your, man. What's your ranking and confidence in the in the four major teams in Philadelphia? One through four. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> God, it's it's wait, definitely wait, Philly's four, Philly four, Eagles, the Eagles two, or, or I guess we're doing Philly's one, uh, Eagles two, uh, in terms of you know most confident, and then three. I mean, it's it's just like Flyers again, because again, organization. I, that's the reason I'm putting them there. Just kind of, when you want to flip in yeah. there, it doesn't matter. Turns your favorite team. Right now, three is the Flyers because the Flyers have moved to Jonesy and yep. they seem like they have a direction and a purpose. And then four is the Sixers. They're trying to move the team into the middle of the city, which is garbage. Oh my God. They Their owner is a Redskins f- owner now, and it's just all bad. The vibes are bad. Maury has never built a championship team. No. 
and it just doesn't feel good. So they're yeah. number four. Yeah. But uh, the other teams right now are on an all-time high. They're riding a the wave. Life is good, and I'm super appreciative. Now, earlier you made a statement, and you said it. Uh, Bryce Harper, thank you for choosing me. You're the sexiest man in baseball. I think that there is a master class coming from you on how to, quote, unquote, pander to believe. Now, pandering is when you're like, oh, you're trying to do it for the people and get people to like you. The guy's already here. He's going to die here. It doesn't matter. He, he's We already got him. So if we extend him at some point, great. But we've already got him for the for, for, for foreseeable future because he doesn't have a trade clause. So when he buys in, and not only does he buy in and his love of the fanatic, the fanatic is a global phenomenon and one of the best mascots that has ever walked God's green earth. Number one, baby. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah, I He's arguably number Truly. one. He and, wins and, the, those polls yeah. for years. He's always won. Yeah, so. always number one. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say arguably because I'm sure somebody could argue somebody else, he's but right. he's number one. Yeah. And so when Bryce accepts him and the bat and the cleats and the glove and the – it's real because he's also got kids. He goes home every day. He knows how much those kids love the Fanatic. He knows how much the people love the Fanatic. Yeah. Guess what? I – We'll boo every single player that has ever touched the field in Philadelphia. We'll never boo the fanatic. <laughs> never in my we life. We never booed hip hop. We never booed nope. Franklin. We never booed the mascots. And you definitely ain't booing the number one mascot. No. So if Bryce wanted to have a fanboy, a <laughs> uh, 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 pander session to somebody, oh, he'd take the A1 A's. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not did. Smitty. It's not Jaws. I didn't even think about it. Oh, Nicole. my God. It, he has fallen in love with and elevated his love for the most beloved yeah. figure in Philadelphia that no one can deny. Oh I have God. never met one person that doesn't love that guy. No. So when you look at Bryce Harper, understand that it, not only are you gifted by the gods, you know what I mean? You're on the cover at 16 like LeBron James. Come out here getting these MVPs. Yeah. Don't get no trouble. Got a family, family clean. You clean. You one of the most handsome men in America. Best looking man in baseball. Thank you again for choosing me. And then you go out here and you do all the things. You say all the things. And again, Bryce isn't out here saying special stuff. No. It's on us. It's on me. I got to do better. I don't know. Like, he's getting thrown out of games sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's... It, we trust him, man. We trust him. He doesn't have to say stuff. We trust him as a player. And, we know he's going to give us. And that's my point when I was just to circle back about Jason. Yeah. About, uh, Jalen. There's a certain way you have to carry yourself when you are a superstar. Because, again, we both love Joel Embiid. Yeah. I love that Joel Embiid would go out to the bars and shake it with some fans. I love that he would go out to the park and dunk on people yeah. and be a man of the people. I don't like Joel Embiid crying in the hallway. I don't like Joel Embiid laughing at pressers when you just got bounced in the second round for the third year in a row, and I'm crying in my home. I don't like when Joel laughs about answers in press conferences. I don't like when Joel says, I love New York. I got a house here. I live in my favorite state. Like, come on, bro. I know English ain't your first language. You from and from Macaroon or wherever it's from. <laughs> I, like, come on, bro. I know. Yeah. I know. You, you want to kill him for these answers. That's what I'm saying. So when you want to yeah. Jalen needs to do this and that. Well, look at Joel and B. Joel, could you reel it back a little bit for me, brother? Like, cause sometimes you just be out here killing me. You're a Packers fan. I know. Know. He's a Real Madrid fan. I'm a I'm a Barcelona fan, so that's even another one I, for me. I, I, can't, I can't stand it sometimes. So I'm I just saying. Uh, that, oh that's that. God. And I, I just wanted to say to Bryce Harper again, thank you for choosing me. So. I was going to say, talk about it real quick, like the, the Utley uh, Always Sunny collab commercial, like the promo for that. I mean, that is perfect, too, because, again, I think that I've – I think I mean, listen, I've certainly had conflicted feelings at times of, like, man, Bryce or Chase, right? We all thought about that a little bit here and there because Chase Utley is the man, and those who were there know, like, he is the man, right? But it, the fact that they kind of had that little tongue-in-cheek, like, who's really the man now, like – I just I just love that so much, and then again the slide, and back to the fanatic real quick. Also, just the the image of him like dressed as the like Queen's guard or whatever in England. I mean, that's even more like how could you not love the fanatic? The that's adorable. First of all, this giant monster is adorable, and then all these English fans now love us. Uh, I mean, it's it's just great vibes all around. So two things on that. One, I mean, when he did his slide, I quoted out. I said, are you not entertained? Uh, yeah. 12 minutes later, the Phillies put, are you not entertained? I'm like, oh, okay. Uh. I see y'all. I, I saw. I know y'all saw my tweet. I know y'all did. Because whatever their caption was, 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 was crappy. And my caption was great. I take my little, my little victory lap in my mind in the back of my head. But um, 
I'm looking for that um, the the video with the Always Sunny. Yeah, that was really good. Honestly, they both like you know the acting was was good enough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was good enough. The acting is is fine. It, yeah. it's not like we needed to be. Oh man, the fanatic in the Queen's Guard. <laughs> Hey, wake up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a drive-by high five to see if he leaves me hanging. People never know that his tongue just squirts out like that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, makes sense. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yay. <laughs> hey, that's my wife, man. Better. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a hug? <laughs> Can we My face, my face genuinely like is tight and hurts from smiling so hard, like watching that. Like that was just every type of person loves the fanatic. I mean, kids and young and old, like the fanatic, just incredible. Chase, what's up, man? Can I talk to you about something? Of course, dude. Listen, I think your front foot is like a little. Uh, it's not about hitting or anything. I probably go Rollins for that, anyway. <laughs> but uh, actually, these letters. Oh, there's stickers. Sorry, your dad is my too. Hi, hi, Mr. Atley. I wrote you a letter every week for the last 10 years. Did you not receive my letters? Dear Bryce, I feel like I can call you Bryce. The dude really wants to have a pet <laughs> in London? Jeez, son of a... You know what? I'll take care of it. <laughs> oh. Look who it is. If it isn't the man himself. Did you think I wouldn't find out about the letters? What letters? Don't play dumb. The letters you sent to Bryce. I'm not a f***ing idiot. <laughs> man, it's just that he's so clutch. And that beard, it's like golden lamb's wool. Having a catch with Bryce in London doesn't mean anything to me. It's, it's like a fling. I'm flinging the ball to Bryce in London. That's it. Fling, catch, whatever, man. You need to choose. It's either me or Bryce. Who will Rob choose, Chase or Bryce? Tune in to find out when the Mets meet the Phillies during the ML. Super duper fun time. The beautiful thing is we don't really have to choose. You know, the beautiful, the beautiful thing is that we have them both. They are ours. Like, you know, as much as at least an L.A. guy, he is ours. Um, yeah, that was great. And then they end up where they did like a double play or something like that instead of actually throwing out a terminal pitch like those three. So, yeah. man, that was a great time. Honestly, really, really well done. Uh, MLB and UK in general. That was a that was cool. Yeah, they had all the things like, um, they had uh, love actually, you know, <laughs> yeah. And I love uh, Philadelphia. I mean, I love love actually. That's one of my favorite, yeah. Movies. Um, let me see if I can find this one other thing. Just listening to like people with British accents dressed in full Phillies gear, like talking about how excited they are to like meet the players and all the different promos and things they were doing. Like that, I didn't I mean again. Like every time I see the fandom we have abroad in general for our sports teams, I'm always like, I guess not super surprised, but it's just it is exciting to see every time. So some little kid got to meet the players. I mean, it was it was great. Yeah, that's actually what I was gonna run. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Man, this is great. Is it taking up the whole screen to you? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, like, we, I still see us and everything. Okay. Would you rather have a thousand pounds or a mystery baseball? Mystery baseball. Why is that? Because I like baseball. Is it your favorite sport? Yeah. What's your name? Mason. I'm Zach. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? Waterston. How long have you loved baseball for? Since I was five. How old are you now? Eight. So why did you start playing? Because I been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and I found baseball while I was getting diagnosed with it. Who's your favorite team? Phillies. Have you been to a game before? No. What's your dream? Play for the MLB. I'm going to give you one more chance. It's a thousand pounds. Baseball. You... you sure? Baseball, yes. Mystery baseball? Yeah. Okay, the mystery baseball is yours. Thank you. Open. Gotta open it up. Congratulations. On behalf of Major League Baseball, I want you to invite you to your family to London series to watch the Phillies vs. Mets play. Meet all the players. 
Thank you. You're going to meet all the players. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Are you excited? Very. Yeah, I'm really excited. I will never forget this day. We're going to the MLB, baby. What's up, buddy? How are you? Nice to meet you. Hello, Trey Turner. What's up, buddy? Nice to meet you, my man. I want to play for the team. Maybe we could be teammates. Yeah. That sound good? Trey Turner. How are you doing, Mason? This is a dream come true. Love you, big guy. Have fun today, okay? This is the best day of my life. Billy, here we go. So, I'll tell you what. I watch those videos all the time. And 90% of the time, I'll be wanting to cry. So, yeah. That one, I don't know, like, if, if somebody knew the kid or whatever, or they just right. saw him, he had a baseball hat on. I don't even care. The kid was generally happy, and it's all about the kids. When I watch those things happen here, because uh, they do them all the time, and they usually, like, go to, like, inner cities and stuff like that, and they find a kid that, like, just loves sports. The one kid, <clears throat> it was $1,000 or it was, like, basketball tickets to whatever mm. and a jersey. And the kid's like, I would really like the basketball jersey, but I'm going to take the $1,000. Yeah. And it was like, oh, well, okay, you know, what do you need $1,000 for? He's like, oh, you know, my mom's just working hard. We're struggling with money, and I know that the money would help my mom out. Yep. And so the, the guy gave him the money. The next day he comes back, and, you know, he still gives him the tickets and does all the things, and the mom was just grateful. Then there was another one where the kid took the, um, the, the present, and it was just a jersey, and then the parent told him, Go back and get the money because, again, they're poor. They need the money. Right, right. And the kid was so sad. But the kid's like, look, it, it, my mom said we, it, if we could get the money right now, that would be fine. You know, he's like, uh, you know, I appreciate it. And what, it was so nice. And you could tell, like, damn, yeah. sometimes you need a little help. And so they usually hook the kids up anyway. Right. And it's, it's just nice. So I, I don't care if any of that stuff's fake because I know the kids are real. Those, right, aren't, right. those aren't actors. You can tell the way the kids are and how excited they are and how happy he was. Yeah. You know, like. Uh, yeah, I was. I don't you know how I feel about players, the, like, the fake, shoes. When he said Trey Turner, boy, he was like. Trey, Trey Turner. Turner. Trey Turner. Uh, Harry Potter out here. Like, Trey Turner. I love baseball. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's it's good for the sport. Cute, yeah. It's good for uh, the city of Brotherly love to get out there and do those things. It was, it's just nice. So they had a good trip out there to London. And uh, yeah, super, super nice. Yeah. The Phillies are Phillies. Would you rather have a thousand pounds? All out of control. It's like, I love the Philly. I would have taken the thousand pounds probably at my age. I'd probably take <laughs> probably gets me when kids that age, like, you ain't trying to buy V bucks. Yeah, I was like, gonna say yeah. crack cocaine money V bucks. Yeah, right? Roblox. V -bucks. And shit. <laughs> when the kid turns down the money, like he yeah. really loves the sport. Like I said, the one kid was like, it was a jersey and a basketball or something like that, and he's like, I've never owned a jersey before. He's like, right. I've never not even thinking I can go buy a jersey with a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? I wonder and, how long before these kids just like they know they've seen it all on their iPads enough that they're like, I know that I, I got to pick them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like I said, that's either the way, though. A lot of it's been real genuine, no, for sure. Like the stuff you're talking about. Oh, that's what I mean. Like when I watch it, some kids do take the money. Some kids yeah, do yeah. take the item. So it's not like they they know better of which one they're right. going to do. So it just it really depends on the kid. And not for nothing. It's just like I said, either way, either it was all fake and staged. I'd rather have fake stage stuff like that. Where a kid gets to go and, and yeah, do something. exactly. They they they, they actually it happened to a, an adult. The adult, um, they asked him for it offered him tickets to a Mavs game. They said a thousand dollars or like they weren't courtside, but they were lower level tickets. Right. And he was just like, I've never been to a Mavs game. He's like, he said, I'll take the Mavs game. And so the the, the wife was like, that's a thousand dollars, like. You know, take the thousand dollars. He's like, well, you know, he's like, I just survived cancer. Like, I just like to have an experience. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we can't afford to like go out. And they, he's like, do you know how much these tickets cost? These tickets probably cost more than a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? And yeah. then he went to the game. They raised money for him on top of that. Right, like, right, right. So again, like, it, it, like I said, if it's staged, fuck, they got me because they they get people that. Like give genuine answers. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think the people are real. Like no matter what, like you said, like even if they, even if the kid, they're like, "Yo, kid, we're gonna give you these two options. Pick the mystery ball." Like that kid was definitely still happy to be with the Phillies and yeah, enjoy yeah. everything. And type and one I, diabetes and like he yeah. ate. Come on now. And, like, and he was a fan. He was a yeah. Fan. He was his, a fan. His face lit up. He's like, "Oh, hey, truly, I, I, like, Trey." Yeah, <laughs> Not the first guy though. Paco walked right. over to him and I was like, "He's like, I don't know who you are." <laughs> hey, hey, cool, cool, cool. Trey, Trey Turner. Like, you know what I mean? 
That means uh, that if I got to meet Bryce. I don't need to meet Bryce because I already thank him for choosing me. But if I ever met Bryce, I'm yeah. Bro. Oh, I was gonna say you don't even know. <laughs> for for I'll tell you the guys out of truth because I've met you're gonna meet Bryce for sure. I, I meet people all the time and I usually don't care because they're people. Like I right. I don't even get pictures with people. Like I've met so many famous people that I don't get pictures with. I just now started getting pictures. Like I told you about this, like with Eagles players that I meet. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to hang out with players and like have team tickets. And I never asked for. I just did, wasn't me. Right. But there's two people from Philadelphia that like man alive. Come on, you, you get me in a room with Allen Iverson, I'm a cry. You get me in a room with Bryce Harper, I'm a hug him and cry. One for AI. Just thanks for like putting your freaking body on the line and all the heart that you've had. Like, yo, dog, I appreciate you. You're yeah. you're Philly tough. And Bryce is literally because I know it's $300 million, but you chose me. Yeah. And so many times we offer money to guys, and we only get these old dudes. Yeah. Nobody comes here in their prime. An MVP in his prime, a dude that was, like I said, on the cover of ESPN, like, as a kid, like, we got a face of the league. We got a, a generational talent. Truly, truly. You choose yeah. us? Man, Middleton, like I said, it's... It, if he ain't got nothing, he broke down on the side of the road. I'm crossing <laughs> state lines to go get him. You know what I mean? Yep. So and he had the best one you could get. I mean, I, I'm I've always I've always loved Trout and I love him still, but it's like, man, Harper, that contract, Machado, whatever. Like, I mean, he got the best of the big three for their rest of their career, probably. So or yeah. those big three, I should say. Yeah. Um, so the last thing uh talk about uh, I gotta make a little video for this. Um Yeah. Caitlin Clark is not in the Olympics. Are you upset? Oh my god. It's the dumbest decision ever. Like literally the dumbest decision ever. And the and you know, again, we can talk about the hate in the WNBA and the comments from this coach or that coach or this player and that player. But it's like the stuff they're saying about justifying not having her on the team. It's so dumb. They want to act like it's like first of all, men, the men's the dream team had Christian Leitner on it. Freaking the redeem team, I think it was, or the one after that had Anthony Davis right out of college on it. Like the NBA is willing to sacrifice a veteran great player at times to advance the league's already growing and great brand. The WNBA won't do it with Caitlin Clark. Like it is so dumb. Am I mad? Like honestly, yeah, a little bit. Because as much as Caitlin Clark maybe not is my favorite player of all time, like there is buzz now that is exciting me, and I would like to see her there, and I would like to see the coverage be greater for the league, and it, it's just ruining all that. So what a dumb decision, and yeah. I'm I'm, I guess I'm mad and, and that it's just so dumb. Ultimately, so have you ever watched the WNBA in the Olympics before? Have I watched w women's basketball in the Olympics? Yeah, I've watched it. I mean, not 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 like very often. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not as much as anything else. You know, other stuff. So. so before Caitlin Clark, do you know what the record for the women's Olympic basketball team is? Undefeated. <laughs> undefeated. Yeah, exactly. So without Caitlin, they're undefeated. Yeah. Top of the world, the whole globe watches them be undefeated. Literally undefeated. Yeah. So, Second thing, the, the, again, <clears throat> the nuanced argument of besides a participation trophy, which a lot of people act like they don't support anymore, but they definitely do. Of course they do. Caitlin Clark isn't on the team because of actual logistics. When you bring up Leitner and um, the other person you brought up, Anthony uh, Davis, Anthony Davis, there is a, a thing called practice qualifiers that the teams have. Mm -hmm. They had them in 2022 and they selected the base team. Then they updated that roster in 2023, and then they updated again in 2024. And since Caitlin and the other girls who were drafted were in the upper echelon of the playoffs, they couldn't make any of those practices or tryouts to formulate a team. So as for the last two to three years, the Olympic team has been playing together, practicing together, being coached by their coach together, and Caitlin was not uh, able to participate in any of those practices or group events due to college and other obligations. And then all of her obligations now to the WNBA. So to take off someone who has been in the program for three years leading up to the Olympics and replace her with a girl who's never stepped one foot, one minute, one second into the process would be what? You messed up for sure, but that's happened. They've done it before. They've done it before. They left Chenny, I think I might be the wrong one, but they left one of the Nwumake sisters who had just won an MVP off of a roster in a recent like FIBA or Olympic event. And it was a huge deal. It was a huge deal. So they've done stuff like this before to have the players they want and the players that might help them. So I agree with you. 
You're right. That's that we messed up. And I do. I am about like having the best players in general. But what a missed opportunity. Period. It, it doesn't matter. Sat on the bench and not played, and then people would complained about that. I and mean, still more eyes than buzz. I mean, now again, like who knows ultimately if it's gonna be a big deal or not. But I mean, you don't think it's a missed opportunity? You don't think that's an issue? Like I think it is a little bit. At least. I'm a Caitlin Clark. You hater. hate her. I know, but it's like you know it would be better for the league. Uh, so here's the thing about that: the the league has to yes embrace Caitlin, but at the same time they can't give her anything. She has to earn it. Do you know there's a rookie in the WNBA that did something that no one's ever done in any other sport that I can really remember? She came in as a rookie, was rookie of the year and MVP of the league because she was great. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing could stop her. She was the number one overall pick on a crappy team, and she was just amazing. Who Caitlin, was it, Candace Parker? You talking about Candace yes. Parker? Yeah, exactly, yeah. I, bro, I, listen, yes. Candace Parker is my favorite women's basketball player of all time, so yes. I, I and love her. When she stepped on the court, she was always phenomenal. Yes. She didn't have the hype train. She didn't have the media. Caitlin Clark is averaging seven turnovers a game, and you want to send her out to the Olympics? She's 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 also doing other good things on a bad team, so I agree with you. I mean, it's listen. I'm, just, I'm not even mad about the team part. It's just that it's bad for, like, it just, again, like, it's just clearly a missed opportunity on some We're level. We're here to win gold medals. We're going to win whether she plays. She wasn't going to play, so who cares? Exactly. So she doesn't need to be there. We don't need a dog and pony show for the world. The world doesn't give a shit about Kate and Clark. A certain fragments of America care. And those people just started caring about the game. They don't. They might not even tune into basketball regardless. So put her out there again just to be a hater on the team when she doesn't play. Because in every Olympic game, you know that there's players that are world class that don't even touch the court. They're literally course, there yeah. for their mentorship and their hard-nosed thing. Practice. And they go in there and get a hard <laughs> foul. Yeah. yeah. They're coaches on the court. So that's why, what's her name? Is everybody's like, why is she on there? She's old. And she's 20 years in the league. Tarazi? Yes, because yes, she's a 20-year vet. Yeah. And she's a four-time Olympic gold winner, and she knows how to play the game. Yeah. She's a general. Like, you need that. Caitlin Clark, just started her career. She's going to have plenty of time to be on Olympics. She can at least be an Olympian three more times on an average uh, WNBA uh, career. So yeah. I don't need those eyeballs. Fair is fair. Participate. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I, in terms of the fairness, I'm with you. Like, I, I, that's why I answered by being like, "Am I mad? Really? Like, I'm not really mad at that. The actual like structure of the decision, but you've talked about this before with the the lack of foresight of the WNBA to make decisions ahead of time, right? How are they yeah. not on top of this a few years ago? That, I mean, she was already this big two years ago, right? So because they had at least a year. Any of the events because she was winning. <laughs> And they didn't, they saw this coming. I'm just saying, like, I, I, I don't know. To me, there's got to have been a way. I don't know. There's got to have been a way. Because I, I ultimately, like, I'm with you on that. But this just feels like a missed it, opportunity. Yeah. Liv woke up a lion. Next game, she gets benched because she sucks. Listen, I think she's going to be great on some level. I don't know if she's going to be, like, elite, like, the best player and win multiple championships. She, but she's going to be a very good WNBA player. She could literally be the greatest WNBA player of all time. I don't want her legs to be broken. I don't want her oh, not to I be mean, the greatest that she can be. Yes. I don't want her not to be the greatest she can be. I just want people to stop grandizing, protecting, and crying over every single thing that happens to this woman. She got fouled. I heard about it for a week. Another girl got a black eye and a busted up nose, and no one said a freaking word about it on any kind of tweet or anything. It's like, oh, a black girl fouled a black girl. Black on black crime. You don't know how thugs be. And somebody with a 10 breeze on her. She was accosted and someone needs to be arrested. Like, I mean, there's element, there's elements of like truth to the hate and that seems like it's happening in the league for sure. There's elements of truth to it. I, I mean, listen, she's a straight white woman who's taken over the face of the league. Like on going up for a rebound. There are worse things. There are worse things happening for sure. But Angel Reese is also like she's a bully ball player. She's gonna be getting into those physical situations Caitlin all the time. Clark See, again, the nuance of it all. I, I, I didn't make a video about it because I just don't – I'm not in the space to get racist comments and have to do yeah, with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when she got bumped the play before that, she elbowed the girl in the face and then talked shit to her running down the court. So when the girl got down the court and she was just mad, she checked her. Because, yo, bro, you're not going to backhand me in my face, turn around and talk trash, and I'm just going to take it. Nah, bro, I'm not about that life. 
This ain't college. Because in college, she used to do that stuff. She used to point at people and, and talk trash. Everybody's like, ah, yeah, get it, girl. And then when somebody does this back to her, it's like, the disrespect of the I mean, again, like, I'm not, you're not totally wrong. You're not totally wrong. But she did this to her bench. You know what I mean? Again, there's there's context and there's different things, right? And again, that girl that also checked her, that maybe she didn't she did get hit, obviously, by Caitlin you know, before that. But, uh, that girl's also, also like, like asking me multiple for her. Oh, I'm going to bring you back in one second, Harry. It happened. It happened. We were doing so good. We got an hour in, hour 15 minutes in, and you started yelling, and then your mic went. Your mic cut because he was trying to defend Caitlin, and that's what happens. That's why you can't defend this woman against me because the microphones know. So Harry's rebooting. He's coming back in a second. But I'm just saying, <laughs> she's a rookie. She's getting rookie bumped. It is what it is. It's good for the league. It's better for the league for her to take the hard knocks and persevere and be the phoenix that rises from the sun. So that's what happened, Harry. Harry, she's a phoenix. If she if she can rise from the ashes of getting beat up by by the girls and by the team, then it's, it's better yeah. for her story to come into league and do what she needed to do. And yeah. I'm tired of men white knighting for her. I'm tired of LeBron doing it. I'm tired of Barkley doing it. First of all, the, Barkley threw people through windows. He got in fight. <laughs> I don't understand what he's talking about with the way no. she's being treated. LeBron James, his whole team was trying to snipe him out the day he stepped on the court. And they're like, I don't yeah. know if he's gonna be able, like, and I know he's speaking from a place of like, man, they hated on me. Yeah, because you were the chosen one. You you got it too. But guess what? You persevered. You persevered. And she has to too. Yeah, and she is. She's her answers to everything are always very classy, I feel like. And she yeah. you know says the right things and she's thoughtful about her teammates. So I, I you know, I feel like that's even more of me getting excited about to see her that she's overcoming some stuff. Maybe that's happening or not happening, whatever. She's doing her best. She's um, doing her best. She's, she's doing, doing her best. best. And she's not an Olympian, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> I'm a hater. <laughs> I want real fans watching the WNBA. I don't need fake yeah. and Harry talking about. <laughs> that's the biggest thing. She she wouldn't play, and then that's all I'd hear about the Olympics. People who never even watched women's Olympics are gonna be like, "Why is she getting in?" That, bro, did we just yeah, but the build up to it, it would it would it would bring more eyes. Like in terms of the way the world we live in, like, all they care about is it views and money. Like. Complaints. It would bring more complaints. Yeah, how no, for people, sure, for sure. How many people after two games realize, wow, she's not getting in a game unless they're blowing out Slovakia by 35 points? Yeah, I mean, that's the other like, thing is, like, all the dumb fans. Watching. Who thought she was going to be the MVP of the league? You know what I mean? Like, who that actually knows basketball coming into this uh, year? You know what I mean? Every, every, uh, Candace Parker could do it. She could do it. Oh, who's – listen, I, not us. Rookie. I she never would have said that. rookie of the year. She's ranked the fifth rookie right Cameron now. Cameron Brink is balling, right? Like, come on now. Yeah. There's, there's some other people. That's fine. That's fine. It, that's fine. all fine. Yeah. So um, follow Harry on the Twitter. Follow uh, me on the Twitter. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Make yourself useful. We're going to get back in our swing, even though it's summertime. So we still might take time off. Steve, you still have to show up. Even if we're not here, I expect you <laughs> to imaginarily click a link. You better say what's up to whoever is here, Steve. We that's need right, you. Steve. And uh, so I, I apologize for yelling at you and docking your pay. I'm going <laughs> to. I forgot that we were here last week, but yeah, um, like I said, all the links are back, uh, all the all the tunes and RSS feeds, everything are live again. So we're back on and popping. Uh, Harry is trying to get his life together, you know, and uh, I think I'm going to try and get my life together too. I can't just chipping away, there. chipping away, doing the best we can. No, Jason, again, happy birthday to your kid. Yes, happy birthday to everybody. And, uh, enjoy it. We're out. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>